Hello and welcome to the Curiosity and Consciousness podcast. The intention of this podcast is to open your mind, get curious about yourself and connect to the power you hold within. I am your host, Karen Maloney, an inside out coach, helping you to believe in yourself and manifest your desires. Check out the podcast available on all platforms and go to my website, www.karenmaloney.com for all info. Hello, hello, everybody. Welcome. Thanks for joining again this week. And this week again, I have another insightful conversation for you. And my guest this week is Christine Meyer. And Christine is a life coach and author of Keep It Simple, Smarty Pants. Stop overthinking, start aligning, live happy. Since 2002, it's been her mission to empower, educate and uplift She's coached unmistakable mavericks in the world to follow their own compass to design and live the life they want through the understanding and mastery of the power of their thoughts and alignment with who they truly are. She is a frequent podcast guest, founding member and regular contributor to the Forbes Coaches Council and is excited to share the fundamental foundations offered to her private clients and in her first of many books. This is a wonderful conversation with Christine and really looking at the power of our thoughts again and how we are more in charge than we realize and we really all are powerful human beings but sometimes to the extent that we can feel disempowered by our thoughts we can also change them and feel really empowered by our thoughts and Christine shares lots of tools and tips and how you can interrupt that overthinking or begin to intentionally create your thoughts as opposed to living at the mercy of them and she uses a beautiful analogy of making a reservation for a restaurant like the thoughts you are thinking now are making a reservation for your future event and again just the idea that we're just habitual in our current way of thinking but that doesn't mean it is or has to stay that way forever again we have the power to choose it and she also touches on the number one relationship in our life the relationship that we're born with and that we must nurture as well for wholeness so there is so many tips and tools and techniques that Christine shares in this episode that really will benefit you like everything if you take them and put them into practice for yourself in your own life to experience the benefits. And you can find out more about Christine's work on her website, christinemeyercoaching.com. And that's Christine, C-H-R-I-S-T-I-N-E, Meyer, M-E-Y-E-R, coaching.com. But as always, I will have links to her website and her work on the show notes on my website, karenmaloney.com and click the podcast section. And as always, if you want to work one to one on this inner rewiring, becoming the conscious creator of your thoughts, feel free to send me an email as well, support at karenmaloney.com and we can chat. And also I am thinking of starting an online book club, but looking at Neville Goddard books, who he is the master in my opinion of learning to be in your power and control your internal world which is what creates our external world so if you're interested in joining an online book club as well looking at his books send me an email to let me know if you're interested and again send that to support at karenmaloney.com enjoy Hello, hello, everybody, and welcome, and thanks for tuning in and joining for another episode. And today I have Christine Meyer joining me. So thank you for joining, first of all, Christine, and it's a pleasure to have you. Thank you so much for having me. I'm happy to be here. Yeah, and, um, you know, I'm sure we'll have a fascinating conversation today as well, lots to share, and I'm sure we've lots of aligned thinking as well. But maybe if you just... Give a little introduction to yourself for listeners and, you know, maybe some of your background and what brought you to what you're doing today. Mm. Well, um, I guess I was always on the search for answers from a very young age. And that search and my own life experience brought me to more questions and more answers. And um, I was always extremely interested in helping animals or people or something. And I knew that from my growing up, I wanted to feel I would not have used 
these words then, but from my perspective now, I wanted to feel empowered. I wanted to know how the universe works. I wanted to know where I fit in and what I was doing here and why, and why was everybody here? So, so a lot of questions. And so I, I delved into personal development books from the time that I was, you know, 17 and relationship books and read all kinds of quantum physics and things like that. And life coaching was something that I didn't even know about. And I went to a personal development workshop and it was being talked about on stage. And I lit up like a, like a Christmas light on uh, a Christmas and knew immediately that I wanted to do that. So fast forward, I've been doing it for 20 years. I got trained all of those things. I've been doing it for 20 years. And the reason why it really matters to me is I think that there are so many beliefs and thoughts that people have that make them feel bad, that disempower them in their approach to the world in their approach in their own lives. And I want people to know that you are more in charge than you might think you are. Mm-hmm. It doesn't always feel easy to be more in charge. And some of these thoughts that that I share with my clients in, in the work that I do with them are big thoughts. But once you start acclimating and, and feeling into them, they do resonate at the very core of your being. And we are all powerful human beings. And we're all supposed to be here living a good life, not struggling and suffering our way to what we want or proving our way or earning our way. And those, again, comments sound perhaps contradictory to what we've been brought up to learn or to to see other people doing. And that doesn't mean you become a a couch potato doing Mm -hmm. nothing and just kumbayaing your way through life and waiting for magical magic. It's just that there's a different perspective, a different thought that you can have a different approach to life based on certain foundations that I do discuss in my book, that that once you grasp them and practice them, you can you can change your approach to being, you can change your approach to life, you can empower yourself to live a life more to your liking. Epic. Yes, I love that. And so much of what you shared there, I can resonate with as well. And especially those kind of search for answers and these questions. But what you said there as well about beliefs and thoughts, you know, that make make us feel bad and make people feel bad. And I think every single one of us can relate to that in some way, shape or form. But, you know, the truth as well, that we do have more power than we realize. And I love the title of your book, Keep It Simple, (laughs) Smarty Pants. Stop overthinking, start aligning and live happy. And that's a major, major aspect, you know, the, the overthinking part. So what have been ways that you have discovered that are some of maybe the simplest or most practical ways that people can really start to not believe their thoughts and stop that incessant overthinking? Well, there are multiple approaches to that. First, understanding that we are human beings and we like to think. It's good. It's good to think. It's good to think. So the primary distinction I want to make, if you're going to be thinking, if you're going to think, if you are a thinker and you like to analyze and, and delve deeply into things, then I suggest your first touch point would be to consider how are you feeling before I start or as I engage in thought about this, whatever this might be, how am I feeling? Am I feeling anxious, frustrated, worried, fearful, mad, sad, glad, excited, eager, satisfied? How am I feeling? Because as you engage in any thought for a very short amount of time, you begin to perpetuate more of those thoughts coming to you. And so it's like getting in your car and putting your foot on the gas pedal. If you keep applying pressure to that gas pedal, your car will go faster. So there's momentum in thought. And so I really like to encourage not make thinking wrong, but make more of a distinction between when it's time to think and when it's time to back off. And so if you're feeling good, whatever good in the realm of feeling good, I say give that subject that you're thinking about some thought or give some thought to that subject. If you're feeling less than good, then I say find a way to tell yourself, find a way to 
put it on the shelf and say, I'll think about that later when I'm feeling better. I'll address that subject later when I'm feeling better. What do I want to perpetuate in this moment? Do I want to perpetuate more of this kind of thought and more of this kind of whatever's happening right now in my world or the world at large that I'm thinking about? Or do I want to perpetuate improvement and solution? And so those are two, that's a distinction to make for yourself. Secondly, if you are feeling like all you can do is feel bad while you're thinking, then you've got to find a way to change the subject Mm -hmm. to something that feels better. Or you could take some breaths, close your eyes, get yourself in a comfortable position, take some deep breaths, not too long, because then you'll start thinking again, because it just the train is already going, so it's harder to stop. But if you can take a few minutes and just take 10 deep breaths in and out and then make a decision, what do I want to do? Do I want to feel good or better? Or do I want to keep feeling bad right now? And then let that inspire you. Let that inspire what your next move will be, whether that be take a walk, whether that be, okay, I'm going to do something differently. I was sitting at my desk working. I'm going to get up and, and do something differently. Or I was sitting at my desk doing this one thing. I'll just do something different for now. So again, thinking is not bad. It's just that whatever you're thinking now, it's like making a reservation for your future. So when you go to the restaurant, let's say in this instance, a busier restaurant or a restaurant that you want to go to, you would call ahead and make a reservation for someplace you want to go. When you want to take a flight somewhere, you make a reservation so that you show up and your reservation is there for where you want to go. And so your thoughts are like that. Your thoughts are constantly, if thought consistently enough and long enough, you are pre-paving, you are making a reservation for future moments that will match or feel like what you're thinking right now, thinking and feeling right now. So think about that as well. What kind of reservation am I making right now in this moment as I think this thought or as I put attention to this subject? What am I reserving for my future? Does that make sense? Yes, I absolutely love that. And I love that analogy. And I'm sure people will be able to relate to that as well. Because again, that is the power that we hold, but we're not taught this. And we're so unconscious to the power that our thoughts hold as well. But again, we always have a choice. And I know for me years ago, it can feel so all consuming. And like, how could I possibly think something different? But Mm. this is this is the work. And what are some of your favorite tools that you use as well to help you kind of wake up and come back conscious to begin to change your thought process? Well, you start a little bit at a time. And again, like I say in my book, it takes practice. It doesn't happen overnight. But if you picture a stream, a 20 foot wide stream, and you're on the left hand side, and you want to get over to the right hand side, and you and I were standing on the left hand side, and I said, okay, I want you to get over to the other stream, or you've said to me, I want to get over to the other side of the stream. And so I would say to you, well, how how do you want to do that? How are you going to go about that? And you would say, well, I'm, I'm not quite sure. So the analogy we're using here is, how do I live more of a life that I want? Or how do I get a hold of my thoughts so that I can think thoughts that feel better? And so we're on the left hand side of the stream. And and I said, what to you? Well, why don't you just jump? And you say, well, you look at me and you say, are you crazy? It's 20 feet across. I'm not, I'm not going to make that. I'm going to fall flat on my face. And I, and I will say, exactly. So how would you get across the stream? And you, smart one, would say, well, let me look around. Let me see. I'm going to pick up this stone and I'm going to put it down and I'm going to pick up this stone and put it down. And and you would say, I'm going to build a path, a path across the stream so that I can step on one stone to the next, to the next when I'm ready. I'll find my balance on one stone and then I'll find my balance on the next and the next. And then eventually I'll be 20 feet over to the other side where I want to be. So it's the same thing with your thoughts. It's like you can't go from having a habit of thought around a subject, whatever whatever subject you can relate to here in this conversation in terms of your listeners and yourself if you want. But pick something that you're you're used to thinking about. It could be money. That's a big thought that people think about. It could be their body, how they look, how they feel. It could be work. It could be their relationship, whether that be their primary relationship or their relationship with their kids, or it could be, uh, I work with, with founders and VCs and entrepreneurs. So it could be, I'm looking for investments in my company, right? So any kind of, any kind of subject that you, you have been thinking about, 
And you have a habit of thinking with most subjects. For the most part, we all have a habit of approaching a certain subject. Or if you know somebody in your life, you could say, that person is a generally happy person or that person is a generally cranky person. So we have habits of thought and approaches to life and perspectives. So you can't go from what you've been thinking for a while to suddenly changing your life to thinking something else or believing something differently than you have, but you can do it a little bit at a time. And often you must do it off the subject that your habit is in. Or if you have a very positive habit in one subject, then I say, think about that and, and notice how you easily think that way about that subject and start applying it to different subjects that you don't feel so positive or good about. And so the way you start is, is by just gently, just gently picking a subject and you say to yourself, is there something that feels better that I can think about right now? Is there a slightly softer thought? Is there a slightly less disastrous thought? This is awful, you say. Well, is it awful or is it just maybe concerning? Now, that doesn't sound like a big difference. But what I want to get to across to your listeners is it doesn't have to be a big difference. You can't, you can't take that 20 foot leap. You've got to make a little step. So you've got to find a thought that feels slightly better or change the subject and changing the subject to a better feeling subject, one that you are more practiced at would also get you across the stream. So how do you, how do you shift from, from having a habit of negative, we'll say negative thoughts around a subject to a more positive? Well, some of the things that I like to, to offer my clients after having set this foundation of stepping stones across the stream is the idea that when you wake up in the morning, you, you can decide, you can intention that you're going to think about the things in your life that are easy to feel good about, easy to feel appreciation for, easy to find your five favorite things about. And I like playing this game myself throughout the day. When I go outside, when I step into a, a new moment, I think, what are my five favorite things about being in this place? What are my five favorite things about this person? What are my five favorite things about that person? So in the morning, now going back to morning, I like to take certainly the primary people in my life and say, what are my five favorite things about you? What are my five favorite things about you? And eventually you train yourself. It's, it's an easy way to train yourself into understanding and feeling the difference between a more positive and aligned thought and a more negative and discordant thought. And so that, that would be one of the tools. Another, another similar approach would be, what do I appreciate about that? What are the benefits of that? I love this game. What makes my life easy? Because so many of us get caught up in the turbulence and, and perceived struggle of our lives and start being more aware of where things are not going right. Instead, what right now, and I will guarantee you that every listener in your audience has probably a very long list of things that makes their life easy. And that could be running water, indoor plumbing, a bed to sleep in, a pillow, a couch to sit on, a, an oven or a microwave or plates, or like the simplest of things. Think about how many of those things make your life easy? And when you start focusing that way, don't you feel blessed? Don't you feel abundant? Don't you feel like life is easy? And, and you can justify the hardship by saying, yeah, but that's not easy. And I want to say, well, sure, perhaps not everything is easy, but let's focus you on what is working, what is easy, what feels good. And that is a gentle way to start training yourself to thinking more positively on those subjects, on those in those areas where it's easier. You don't even have to start applying it to the harder subjects. It, it can bleed over, if you will. But you'll be recognizing those moments when you're pushing against yourself, when you're contradicting your own desires more when you've practiced understanding and knowing and feeling the difference between how I feel when I think this way, what makes my life easy, five things I appreciate about you, or my five favorite things about you, so on, so on, about you. And that could be about the painting that you're looking at. It doesn't have to be world 
changing. Mm-hmm. It doesn't have to be problem solving and, and, and creating world peace. But I want you to know that when you are in alignment like that, when you are focusing yourself, not only are you improving your own life, especially in this moment, but you are now making reservations for future moments to be more like this. And you're also allowing the things that you care about, you're tuning yourself to the frequency of solutions and improvements for those things relative to yourself and anything that you've ever thought of, really. Um, And again, like you say, it's, it's a total and utter practice and it is training and it's retraining ourselves to think in a new way. And, you know, I was smiling there when you say like it's the simplest of things and absolutely it is. But again, it takes a practice because we're so complacent. We're so stuck in our fear or worry stories that we don't see and appreciate everything that we do have and the wonder and the gift that everything is. And even this life with all its difficulties and challenges it is still a gift, but again, it's it's us to change our focus and perception. And again, when it comes to thoughts, and I know for me, like I was that incessant overthinker and I couldn't even pinpoint my thoughts. They were so fast. Mm. And for me, I really had to build a body awareness practice first and foremost, like you mentioned earlier, even checking in with my emotions because I lived in my head. Like there was no body awareness, body connection, what what I was Mm -hmm. feeling or anything. So that's really an important practice as well. But even for Well, even to help maybe expand the conversation a little bit as well, uh, because again, we take our thoughts so seriously sometimes, but actually they're just (laughs) a thought. Seriously, like, but again, this is the work and this is the learning when you're on the inner journey. It's like, oh my God, it's just a thought. And actually I can change that thought instantly and I can change it as many times as I want. But again, I know for me, the person I was, I just did not have the capacity at all to not take them seriously or personally. So on a bigger perspective and expanding the conversations, you know, where do these thoughts even come from in the first place that we've decided to to hold as truth to ourselves well there some of them are very learned are they not from mm-hmm. from your your parents and and significant people in your life and out there in the world are our thoughts not learned our beliefs not learned and and many of us come to our own conclusions about things but do we ever stop to examine those beliefs and those thoughts Mm -hmm. do we ever stop to examine and assess them we're not taught as children to say does that thought feel good or bad can you think something that feels better because if we were that that could change the trajectory of our lives forever none of us would need therapy or coaching yeah (laughs) you see so 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 you pick them up along your physical trail or uh, about other people and every thought that's ever been thought still keeps thinking it's a vibrational world that we live in it's an energetic world that so if you're thinking a thought about something disastrous it's easy for you to if you get hanging around there a little bit in that vibrational content you can it's easy to pick up on other thoughts it's so easy i i, I know i have found myself doing it i know that Everybody that I know has found themselves doing it. And the same thing goes for the other way. When you start thinking how amazing your life is or how much you love this person or that or this or this, it's easy to then add, continue adding to those thoughts. But whenever you feel, whenever you have a thought and it feels bad to you, it's not an indicator that something bad is about to happen or that you're wrong or undeserving or unworthy, which a lot of, you know, so many things we could talk about here. Mm-hmm. But what it always means is number one, your your what you're perceiving and thinking and feeling right now is contradictory to how your soul, your broader perspective, your non physical self, your your Santa Claus, your Easter bunny, whatever you want to call that other aspect of you that is is flowing and blowing and to you and through you, is not resonant with that thought that feels bad to you. There's another perspective, a better feeling perspective that you could have about that. So that's number one, when you feel bad. Number two, with that definition there, always, 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 when you are feeling bad, you're bumping into some sort of a limiting belief. You're bumping into a belief that doesn't match who you've, who you've expanded to. And that's good information. And that's really mm. all it means. But I want to make sure here, your thoughts matter. Your thoughts matter. And what you want matters. But use them as information, not as something to wear on your on your sleeve and, and show everyone and say, see, see, this is what I think and this is how I feel, which is fine. Uh, I'm not ever saying don't speak to people. I'm simply saying use that information for yourself to guide you 
and to help you point more in the direction with your thoughts or changing the subject and emotions of where, what you want versus what you don't want. So many of us get caught up in that perpetuation of thinking about what we're trying to avoid, thinking about what we don't want. And we stay on that train. Again, easier to keep doing because law of attraction just perpetuates when you're when you're thinking you begin that process of attraction. So it's easier to attract more thoughts like it. It's easier to hang out where you've always hung out than it is to change a thought than it is to make the effort because it will feel like effort to say, well, wait a minute, I, I this doesn't feel good. I'm going to change the subject or I'm going to get on another train, meaning I'm going to try to think something that feels a little bit better, a little bit better. And you can mm -hmm. feel really, really, you don't get from crappy to happy. Yeah. Right. You go from crappy to a little less crappy to a little less crappy still and a little less crappy still to maybe not so crappy at all. Mm -hmm. So what I'm saying is don't try and think for the best feeling thought you've ever thought the best, the most positive sounding thought you've ever thought. It's more like this sucks. Well, okay, well, most of it sucks, not all of it. And, and perhaps some of your listeners are saying, well, that doesn't sound like much improvement. But I want to say, keep going. N not everything sucks. There are some things that are working in my life. I've gotten a hold of quite a few things. In fact, I really love my dog. That's working. I love my dog so much. And now you're off on a different tangent. You've distracted yourself from the negative feeling thoughts. And it's that simple. Mm -hmm. It's that simple. It's understanding that it's not this big leap you have to take. It's just little steps. And like I said, go from feeling crappy to feeling a little less crappy yeah. and a little less crappy still and a little less <laughs> crappy still. Yeah, that that truly is the game. And to think that you can go from crappy to happy, all of a sudden, you're not going to and you're going to fall face flat in that stream. And then you're going to say this, this crap doesn't work. I, I'm not good enough. I'm not doing it right. You are just keep at it. But don't yeah. ask yourself to jump that 20 foot stream. You won't make it you won't sustain it. You've got to find a way to sustain it. That's it. Yeah. It, it is the persistence. It is the keeping going. And that's the work for everyone. Because like you say, it is easier to stay how we are, continue what we're currently doing or thinking because it's familiar to us. Again, it's, a, it's the way our brain is programmed. It's familiar. So it's easier, even if it's uncomfortable, even if we hate it, even if we're so fed up of it. It's our <laughs> default at the moment. And that's why it is consistently that interrupting the pattern, like you speak about, in any way, shape or form. And, you know, that was something for me to really grasp as well, because I thought it was meant to be harder. And I'm like, what? Mm. This is it? I literally just start thinking about <laughs> something else. Like, yes. what? <laughs> I, you do, I know. Yeah, you do yeah. it consistently until that's a new thought habit and the other one dissipates. Right. It, it's no longer there, but it is the persistence it is the keeping going like that analogy again of your stream it's the the next step and the next step and the next step and knowing that it's up and down and it's forward and back and knowing that that's okay but it's keep going anyway because that's what brings true lasting transformation and then you learn more and more about your own power and it becomes more and more natural and I love when you said as well that when we're feeling bad you know like that it's it's just we're bumping into our old wiring and i always say as well to to clients i'm like look at everything as information as opposed to trying to label be curious Great. what is this yes. reflecting to me because everything in our external reality like you mentioned about the reservation it's a, a result of our previous thoughts it's like there's a lag so if yes. i can if i can look at it being like okay what information can this give me about me because then we're winning then it's like oh my god i can learn something new i can uncover something new I can change something new and it does become really interesting and empowering and fascinating but again it's a practice and I love when you mentioned as well or maybe I know you talk about as well that that connection between that soul and that other essence that's running through us and our physical reality and maybe you could talk to that a little bit more as well Oh, well, there's so much that I could say about that is there anything particular you'd like me to point out here well I suppose you know or even on the journey as well, you know, lots of people know or have a feeling that there's something else, but because it's intangible and because we've been taught that what we can't touch, taste and see is not real, it doesn't exist, mm. don't believe in it. But, you know, the, the soul or that higher aspect of ourselves is the ultimate truth and the ultimate reality. So when we connect more to that and bring it into this physical, everything flows better. So even how do you help people to really embrace the intangible and this energy, this life force that's available to us as well to help us in this physical reality. 
Well, the primary communication that we were born with, knowing that we were born with, was that feedback of our emotional content. And so that is really the primary communication that we have with that non-physical aspect of us. And that non-physical aspect of us, our soul, is always in existence. It's never it's never departed from us. It's always present. We are that and and it is flowing to us and through us. And so when you can begin to make that connection between your emotions, that feedback you're receiving and and how you're feeling, that lets you know what you're doing with that that relationship between you and your soul in this moment. That's what your emotions are. They let mm-hmm. you know how you're managing, navigating, handling, whatever word you want to use <laughs> here, that relationship. And that is the primary relationship that you are born with to cultivate and to understand. Mm-hmm. Because when you are blending, the way you blend well with your soul is by feeling good. The way you feel disconnected, you are never truly separated or disconnected, cut off, but you will feel disconnected when you are thinking, feeling something that doesn't feel good, something negative in nature, if you will. And so a lot of us look to other people to provide that feedback, look to other people to provide the fulfillment and fill the void and so on. When we have what we need. And this is not new information. Mm -hmm. It's just simply understanding that that is your primary relationship to cultivate. Because when you can blend well with your soul, you are being and doing and experiencing more of who you truly are. You're experiencing your optimal self. And so when I'm working with my clients, there is a great emphasis on Many people come to me to be their optimal self. They're already successful. They're already living great lives. And yet they might feel like something's missing or they want to to achieve more. They want to experience more. They want to feel more of what they're capable of. So that understanding is really primary in navigating your life and understanding what you're in the process of creating and understanding how much positive influence you could have for yourself and others when you are blending, when you are intentionally making that connection between you and you. Mm. Yeah, I love that. And it's so, so vitally important. It's like all the old, and not in the religious context, but all the old spiritual religious texts. It's that age old information of we are everything we've been looking for and everything lies within. And I truly believe the root of a lot of illnesses and addictions of whether it's work or drugs or whatever kind is that disconnection from ourselves. Like when we truly- 100%, 100%. When, yes. And I can say I experienced that as well. When we truly know ourselves and connect to ourselves like that, we feel whole. There's nothing outside of us then. Yes, things can augment, but we're not looking for something or someone to fill something else within us. It's like, oh, I feel so whole and complete and it's overflowing. And yes, other people can add into this and it gets better and better. But yeah, it's that true disconnection from ourselves, I think, is the root of everything. And I also believe actually it's it's the journey we're here on this Mm -hmm. earth for is we forget yeah we forget when we're born and the journey is to remember the truth of us and then live from that place and everything flows so much easier not to say that there's still not challenges but again you've you've got this different perspective and these different thoughts and this power that you can choose and there is another way always. So yeah, I love that as well. And I totally agree. It's the primary relationship. Yeah. And I I believe we're born knowing this. We're born, Mm -hmm. we're born knowing this, but we are trained out of it with other humans who don't, who don't know it. Right. So when you, when you get scolded by your parents, you have a negative emotional response and you feel bad and you think, oh, I'm, I'm wrong. I'm, I'm bad. I'm wrong. I've done something wrong because that person is upset with me. But that feeling bad is because your attention on that person's, let's say, criticism in this moment and you believing it is what's dissuading you, is what's taking you away from your connected being. And so when you're disconnecting yourself with your perspective, with your attention, with your focus, with your thoughts, with your conversation, you feel the negative emotion. So, so we're born knowing. 
we're trained out of it. And then, and then if we have the wherewithal to relearn it, we have to relearn it. But when you start relearning it, and I will guarantee you that, and you know this, that there are, your listeners are, are probably resonating with that mm -hmm. knowing as they listen in about this. And so it's not, it's not, it's not a religious thing. It's, we're all energy beings mm -hmm. and we all have an energy a consciousness that is energy that we can't see or taste or touch or smell, but we can feel. Yeah, so true. And again, I think that's that's what we're all being asked to remember and connect more to during these last few years and all the transitions mm. and the point that we've come to in humanity as well. It's through the total disconnection from ourselves, from each other, the idea of separation from, again, ourselves, the earth, the bigger picture, whereas, no, we're all interconnected and we all... The more that we all remember this and work from this place. And I remember I had a guest before as well. It's like, well, the thing about it is when we connect to ourselves and know the, the bigger truth and why we're all here, we're, we can't be manipulated as easily. And we don't buy into all the fear and the hate and the violence because, again, that's just a product of our thinking. But again, as a collective and individually, we can change it. And that's what we're all asked. But it has to start with ourselves as well. Um, but just as well, before we wrap up, I just want to touch on your book as well. And what are, or what's one of your favorite lessons from, or topics from your book as well? Oh, well, my favorite topic is always, um, hmm, probably that your emotions are really, we already talked about it. Your emotions are really important, but probably not for the reasons that you think. Mm -hmm. So in my book, I talk about, you know, a soul, I talk about your emotions being important and why and how, how that relates to you, how that works. And that reality doesn't happen to you as mm -hmm. well. And I go into some false premises, some things that we as human beings tend to believe and then live our lives by and then build our lives upon these false foundations. And it's no wonder we topple over at some point. And then how to put that into how to put the pieces that I've talked about into into action, into place, into, you know, understanding. So uh, I, I, I guess I, I did my very best to keep it really simple mm -hmm. and basic. But it's all you need to know, and it can forever be expanded upon. And so I, I kind of like it all, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest. It's like it, what, one piece is important, but then all the pieces together help mm. you understand who you are, yeah. why you're here, how law of attraction works, because there's a lot of false premises out there around law of attraction. It's not just about positive thinking. If you were, I, I do, I wanted to say this a little while back, mm -hmm. you can use all of the positive words, the good sounding words that you want. And, you know, yes, I'm... I'm a billionaire. I'm whatever, whatever, whatever. You can you can say all of the things that you want, but if you're not feeling it, the universe is always, law of attraction is always responding to your broadcast, not your words, your vibe, what you're putting out there, how you feel is your indicator of what you're putting out there and in the process of creating. So that's why you got to take those little stepping stones. If you're not up to speed with those positive words that you're saying, if you don't really mean them, if you don't really believe them, then start someplace else. Start with, I'd like to believe that I could fill in the blank. I'd like to believe that mm -hmm. I can have fill in the blank. I'd like to believe that my the pain in my body will improve. I'd like to believe that I could. You start from where you are. You don't say, I believe or I am well when you're having an experience where you're not feeling well. That's, it's going to defy your own logic and it's going to put your senses up in shackles because you're always told not to lie. So here you are lying to yourself. So you've got to make bridge that gap a little bit. Make a bridge by, well, I'd like to believe that my body will recover. I'd like to believe that I can make more money or I'll have more money. I'd like to believe that I can get the funding from those VCs or those investors. I'd like to believe that my company will be successful. I'd like to believe that I'll find the employees I need. I'd like, I'd like to believe that I'll find the mate that I want. I'd like to believe that there's a relationship out there for me that that is to my liking. I'd be, because if you're saying to yourself, I have the relationship that I want, if you're there, go for it. If you feel like it's not even there, but you feel you can feel the presence of it, mm -hmm. then then 100% make those statements of affirmation. But if if you're not, if you're trying to convince yourself, start someplace else. I'd like to. Wouldn't it be nice if I could? When I do, won't it be nice? Like that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Again, you know, changing our thoughts to create an easier segue into path, it. Yeah. You know, absolutely. But again, um, I have 
shifted slightly in how I think because I I used to think more that way and kind of segue into things. And yes, I agree, there are times when you need to do that. Whereas now I've kind of totally changed and I don't because for me, I thought I had to have some sense of belief around it from the very beginning. Whereas now I know like, or Mm. and again, this is just my experience. I'm like, we will never believe Anthem straight off that we say to ourselves that's new because what is a belief? A belief is a thought that we've thought loads of times that now it's just taken in as true. So naturally, no matter what I say, I'm not going to believe it, no matter how soft or fluffy I make it, I'm still not going to believe it because a belief takes time to embed. So I've reverted to the old way again of embodying the, no, I am the whatever, because our I am is the most important words that we can, we can ever say, you know? So um, yeah. Definitely Uh, use I am unless it's, it really ruffles your feathers. Yeah, 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 yeah. That this work is always about, well, where are you? Exactly. That's why, yeah. that's why I really like working one-on-one with people because I'm going to address everything that is specific to you. Not mm-hmm. like there are generalizations 100% and there are foundations that never change and, and those are good, but how, how you apply them, how they relate to you can be uniquely to you based on your thoughts, based on your beliefs, based on what, your life experience and so on. And so I also like, to your point, I am, th- I think that's fabulous if you're there, but mm-hmm. if it rubs you the wrong way, don't yeah. do it. Say, yeah, I'd yeah. like to be, but I also like, I also like, I'm the kind of person who, And that I have found really effective with my clients because it's not offensive to their senses. I'm the kind of person who who gets funding. I'm the kind of person who uh, lives a really good life. I'm the kind of person who loves my life. I'm the kind of person. It's a little softer. It's Mm -hmm. not I am. Yeah. It's I'm the kind of person, right? So I'm similar to. So again, it's like we find all kinds of little tricks, if you Mm -hmm. will, to 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 keep bridging those gaps to keep bridging those beliefs totally absolutely and again this is the fun there is no one yeah. solid way you know no, it's like no. i can do it whatever way that feels good to me you can <laughs> exactly. do it whatever way feels good to you every single person on the planet can do it how it feels good to them and it becomes a very intuitive process the more Correct. that we do it again so yes absolutely i totally agree and this is again the power and the fun and it's for us to have fun with it you know this we're here to have fun this is the underlying theme of life as well like have more fun whatever way yeah um loved it thank you so much christine for sharing today please (laughs) if there's anything else that you're feeling you want to share before we part ways please do but please also share where people can find out more on your work well i I think that i just want to say be easy on yourself be kind Mm. to yourself find ways to yes have more fun. Ask yourself, if I wasn't feeling unworthy, or if I didn't think I needed to prove myself, or if things were always working out for me, what would I do? What would I say? Who would I be in this moment? And and be kind to yourself. If you're having a, a negative emotional moment, that doesn't mean you're bad or wrong or a failure or understand that emotions are feedback. What is this, what is this telling me? What is this emotional feedback telling me right now, to your point earlier? And so in closing, it's just a practice. It's, it's a practice of your own evolution, of your own discovery. And the more you practice feeling good, the more you discover who you truly are without making any of the shadows. I was trained in some shadow processing stuff originally. So any of the thoughts that you think that feel bad are not wrong or bad or not an indicator. It's, it's what are you making that mean? And what do you choose now? Who are you now? Who are you now? Who are you now? Yeah. And so people can find me. I'm consistent across the board. ChristineMeyerCoaching.com is my website. And then Christine Meyer Coaching on LinkedIn and uh, Facebook and Instagram. I don't post often on the socials, but I am there mm-hmm. occasionally. And my book is called Keep It Simple Smarty Pants. Stop Overthinking, Start Aligning, Live Happy. And it's on Amazon. 
Thank you so, so much. And as always, I will link everything from the show notes as well on my website. And I think that's just such a beautiful ending message as well. You know, that practice of your own discovery and evolution. Mm-hmm. It's like, yes, go have fun, be you, yes. discover more of you. And yeah, lots that's of- what life is for, to totally. discover you, create and discover you. That's yes, it. You're, you're the creator of you. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. But again, we're not taught this. This is the whole relearning yeah. and unlearning and choosing more consciously and living more curiously. So Mm -hmm. thank you so, so much for a wonderful conversation. And I wish you all the best. Thank you so much. It was really nice to be here.